Well, good morning, everyone. We're here getting started about a minute early uh, at the Preston Art Center. Uh, we're in our lovely canvas section because we are talking about a material that is usually a watercolor that you'll be able to use on canvas. Now today, uh, I won't be the one doing the demonstration. We have, for your viewing pleasure, Professor Lloyd Kelly. Good morning, how are you all? Uh, I'm delighted to be able to share with you some of <coughs> my discoveries and the gouache, not gauche, gouache, not spelled G-W-A-S-H and not squash, but it rhymes with squash, but it's actually spelled G-O-U-A-C-H-E. And this product, which is new to me, is Holbein acrylic gouache, which means the carrier is acrylic. Acrylic. The um, traditional gouache, the carrier is gum arabic. This is acrylic. Therefore, the acrylic is permanent. Now, I'm going to give you a little demonstration here. We'll see if this works. And I don't know which is which because it's hard to tell which is which. One of these is the acrylic gouache and the other is the traditional. So we're gonna squirt a little water on here and see what happens. Oh. So this is a, a secret taste testing. Uh, this is a taste testing. Okay. And we're gonna see which is which by rubbing it. Oh. Uh -huh. Look at there. So obviously that's the traditional gouache. Look at that. Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. Ooh, good. I didn't check it before we did it, but it looks like it really works nicely. Mm -hmm. You can see the difference here. This will reactivate, obviously, the traditional, where this, once it's down, it is permanent. And it's a virtue, but also you have to be careful because as I was experimenting with this, I forgot to use my brush. And thank goodness I didn't wasn't using my Preston Art Center 80th anniversary special brush. Available with any purchase of any size here in the store. And Andrew here doesn't look a day over 30. It's amazing. Well. Oh, no. Amazing. So let's try this other one and see if this one works. Mm-hmm. So obviously the, the traditional gouache is re-releasing, re it's re-wetting, whereas the acrylic gouache is staying permanent and untouched. Reactivates. Mm -hmm. But the final product, you cannot really tell the difference because, um, and actually I have a number of them in my sketchbook and I can't really tell which one I use sometimes on the, if I use the traditional or I use the um, acrylic gouache. And I'll have to spit on my sketchbook to see which is which. Well, I don't spit on your own artwork. Um, I want to say something about the uh, gouache is that have used this to great effect. First of all, ironically, Hans Holbein, the name of the company, Holbein, the younger, 1497 to 1543, famous for painting the portrait of Henry VIII, used gouache. Degas gouache. At 1800s, these are um, Impressionists, Toulouse-Lautrec, Mary Cassatt. Then you get even to the more modern people, Chagall, uh, Salvador Dali, Henry Matisse, Picasso, mm -hmm. Calder, Jackson Pollock, mm -hmm. more contemporary yet, Agnes Martin, who did all the grids, John Singer Sargent, Vincent van Gogh, David Hockney. David Hockney? Yeah, so hmm. you're right in in that company. Um, let me show you a couple of the uh, of examples of things I've done with the this media out of my sketchbook. You can come in a little closer on these. Mm -hmm. Oh, very nice. Butterfly. 
Now, Lloyd, I noticed when you, even though this is an acrylic, when you open up your um, sketchbook, there's no glare coming off of the acrylic. None. Draws completely flat, and there's a, a gouache right now is a thing. Mm -hmm. And I've got uh, some unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated theories of why. One, I think it because it photographs so well, digitally it looks great on the internet. Mm -hmm. You can scan it, you see a lot of it on Instagram and Facebook, any kind of social media. Oh, here's something else you can do with it. Mm -hmm. Silver point. Silver because point. It, it has a, here's a silver point. Yeah, for those of us not familiar, what is silver point? It's actually just a little silver wire right mm -hmm. here. And the silver wire, uh, this was a forerunner of the lead pencil. Oh. And it's, see, it's kind of pale and gray, but over time, this will be just like silver, grandma silver in the drawer that you never polish. Mm -hmm. It gets darker. Uh, oh, wow. Sometimes you'll even see them mislabeled in a museum of all places. They think it's pen and ink. Aha. Uh -huh. Or an etching because these little fine lines will get darker over time. Mm -hmm. But see, that's it's an abrasive, uh, it's got a little tooth to it, mm -hmm. so it can pick up the, oh, here a minute, here we go. Let me reach across you, excuse me. Sure. Here's a piece on this uh, Talon's paper, which is fun. Mm -hmm. But look how we can draw on that. Well, it has there. a lovely sound. <laughs> there, there we go. Interesting. It's sort of like a um, very hard lead pencil, like a, what, 8H or something, or 5H, mm -hmm. before you get the HP. The other reason that this is nice, having this tooth, it's why uh, Degas used this to such great effect, is pastel, they play together great. Mm -hmm. In fact, I even have a, somewhere in my jungle, oh, here it is piece of um, paper that I lay down a tone which should be a will be a ground for a pastel so you can take and convert any paper that you have into pastel paper using this product oh very nice it is, it is great um, blast through my there in the size privé this midi was also used very extensively uh, during the 30s, 40s for travel posters, advertising industry, uh, architects, designers, because also then, it is, as now, it scanned so well, or didn't scan then, it would photograph well. Mm -hmm. These are a little, okay. Now, you notice I've got this my little rubber band here? Mm -hmm. It takes about 10 to 20 minutes for these to dry. So these were done out west, so they dried in five minutes. Mm -hmm. But if you're in the studio, Aha. you can accelerate that. Sure. But what I do is I carry this rubber band, and so when, I, when I'm working I'll put the rubber band on to remind myself not to close it until it's dry because it will glue itself to the other page. Mm -hmm. Now the nice thing about now this is Stillman and Burn heavy paper which you all sell that here um, and this was, is very heavy but you can put one can use this on thinner paper because there's not that much water in it as there is in watercolor so uh -huh. it will stick really well and it doesn't pucker the paper so much. That's great news. So it's great for journaling. Good for journaling. So these are, this is the famous mint bar and that's the sign. And this, I use this. These are all my journalistic notes reminding myself what color different things are. So I'll go back and use this for a painting. So it's nice to have a quick study that you can do and have, but I'll tell you, these the colors, they just sing because they have that intensity. Mm -hmm. Here's another thing we can do is, um, this is watercolor, regular mm -hmm. watercolor for the most part, 
and then I put in gouache because it has more intensity. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So it just makes those pop up. So the, the gouache covers over the watercolor very nicely and... It sticks yeah. very well. It will stick on just about any surface it will adhere to very well. Are you, are you using the same brushes for your watercolor as you are your gouache? Good question. No. The, here's the great thing about this too, is we don't have to use those expensive uh, Kalinske sables that these are synthetics, and synthetics actually do better. They're less expensive because they have a good snap because the body of these is a lot thicker than it is on a watercolor. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, I, I like the, the Princetons. They're not terribly expensive, and so uh, it wasn't too much of a tragedy when uh, I forgot to clean one. Now this, because these brushes, you do have to rinse them often because I got used to back you know, using my traditional gouaches, you could just leave your brush, it didn't matter. Right. And it will come right out. But what happened with this one is I didn't clean it enough and then it got into the, the ferrule up here and then I had a half a brush left mm -hmm. because it would dry up in here. So that's one thing you have to remember if somebody says, you know, Oh, can you help me carry in the groceries? Yes, no problem. First, I have to rinse out my brush. <laughs> okay, here comes a... I want to give you some of the secrets here. And discoveries I made. And as far as secrets go, I, I don't think there should be any secrets with artists. We should share everything, that any knowledge we have. There is a... Uh, in this line of paints... There is a line of grays that you can, okay, here's an example, here's two of them, here's the number one, here's number two, it goes in four different levels of gray. Now Lloyd, I can mix gray with just black and white paint. Yes, you can, but the problem is you have to be careful about the, the black and the white. Uh, this one, for example, is good old PK7 in here, mm -hmm. which is a carbon black, so it doesn't change the uh, color just a little bit, but not too much. Ah, so it's only black. It's not an extremely dark version of blue or purple or something like that. Well, and it's ivory black can be a problem because, for example, if you mix ivory black with yellow, you get green. Oh. So it shifts the color. Mm -hmm. So we can lay out as like a traditional oil painting would be done in grisaise and grays to get your values correct and then lay on top of that another layer. Mm -hmm. You can even switch to go back to your traditional gouache. But why wouldn't I want to use the traditional gouache for the bottom layer? Because that will reactivate and bleed through and muddy up the colors on top. Ah, okay. Good question. Now here's another little thing we can do with this. Another secret worth the price of admission here. Ooh. This is the same study, but this one was underpainted as one can do with oil. So, for example, the sky was first painted orange, complement of blue, purple of the lavender, was painted yellow complement. So what happens then, we can go th through here, and all this is yellow, so we paint the left. So it peeks through, and then the eye mixes that and causes it to vibrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the background. You get that orange peeking through. Yeah. And even in the tree, there was a little underpainting of red and that gives that a little bit more life. I see that. Nice. And see how here that can gray it by putting the two opposite colors right next to each other. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. Also, it could be this is all acrylic, the entire thing. Mm -hmm. But one can put the traditional on top of it. Okay. Let me... Um, 
I'm not through here. I've got another sketchbook. We'll talk through that quickly. We've got some more secrets we want to come up with here to tell you about. Some things that are really... Okay, we're going to blast through here. Here's the same thing with the uh, watercolor and then the gouache on top. So, for example, the pink in this tree, is that's all gouache on top of the watercolor. Beautiful. So it really juices it up. Same thing here. This was a very quick little sketch and then came back and popped in a little bit of that yellow to make mm. the flowers pop up. Same thing with the lavender. More of those techniques. Now this is all gouache here. But see how these colors can just sing. Yeah. Mm. Oh boy. You can get so because they these have a very high pigment load. Tons so pigment. saturated. Very saturated. Right, oh, that's a design from a Native American parflesh design. Hmm. Let me show you some of these little things here quickly. See how these things can get layered over? Oh, this is paint. This is not tape. No. This is the... I use, you know, tape to tape it off and then paint it on it. But you can see how that... Mm -hmm. Opacity. Wow. Opacity. Look at that up. coverage. Yep. And... The yellow over the purple there is fantastic. It's kind of... Fun, but even doing these test things to kind of semi make art out of it. Mm -hmm. Show you how these things cover. This is on black paper. Ooh. And then more uh, water was added to these. We go across. Aha. Uh -huh. Still a lot of opacity. Definitely so. This one we just added white to them. Mm -hmm. and one thing's even more opaque. One can add white, and it really covers. Now here's, each one of these has this little star on it to cover. And you can see how with the addition of white, how it goes really opaque. Oh, sure. And these show a just different amount of water in this coverage. And you can see how you can get a lot of variation going on. Mm -hmm. Variation. And they can blend together. Now, here's an example. Let me show you the difference between watercolor and gouache, but how you can take traditional gouache and watercolor. Now, this is watercolor, this is gouache. Both had an addition of white gouache. So this white gouache to your watercolor looks similar. Mm -hmm. So that can be incorporated in the two. Now what does not mix, not mix, is the watercolor and gouache together. Uh -huh. But they can be laid on top of each other. So we are not supposed to mix the acrylic gouache with any traditional watercolor no, or gouache. Doesn't work. They don't play well together. Got it. But they can work on top. Oh, that's very nice. So this, all right here is your traditional gouache mm -hmm. from Arabic. Here is the acrylic gouache on top. Then we did it the opposite way. Here is acrylic gouache, the blue, traditional on top. Mm -hmm. And you see how well it sticks. Ah, here comes another super secret tip. Remember those four grays, neutral grays? The neutral grays, yeah. Neutral is the key on this, neutral. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't do a huge shift on the color. The, uh, so these were mixed with blue, this is all acrylic wash, and then white added to it. Okay. 
but look at the beautiful colors that you can get out of here. Such a huge range from just a few tubes. And not mute, not muddied. Yeah. Not muddied. See, they're clean. Very clean. Very clean. Beautiful colors just from those four tubes. And then you can add colors to any of these. So one can change the value without making the hue, the color, go crazy or get muddied. Super, super thing to be able to do. Mm -hmm. Makes painting easy. On the internet, I, ser I searched to see what was going on with acrylic wash, and someone said that you can take and add matte medium, mm -hmm. which makes sense because it's acrylic. So, decided to try it. And that's what this is. This is the matte medium that goes with it. This is water with acrylic wash. Okay. Here's the issue I had with this matte medium. Is it really dries fast? Mm. Because you got so much acrylic in it. Mm -hmm. Super dries fast. And then it kind of puts heavy brush strokes. Sure. Where the other one kind of takes brush strokes out of it. Okay. Here's another, just color strings, make that fun. Mm -hmm. And, okay, we want to show you some other fun things. We were talking about how this stuff can stick to canvas. Yeah. All right, so I, I employed uh, child labor on this. I got my grandson, Jasper, who's three three-year-old so he still thinks it's fun it is fun yeah <laughs> uh, and he has no inhibitions this uh, these zen circles he did the zenzo circles mm -hmm. and this is the traditional wash because there's something about the parents and the grandmother don't want me to give him acrylic huh um but you see see how well this sticks and he put a bunch of a lot of water on some of it but even then when he put that much water mm -hmm. it still stuck yeah then after this was finished because it is and this is a um, oil prime linen only the best for the three-year-olds <laughs> the he preserved this because if it got wet here we go Kamar varnish, just spray that on mm -hmm. and it stays. Okay, so there is a way to preserve and make permanent uh, traditional the gouache. Traditional gouache. Good. Exactly. Good. Now, for as far as sticking on things goes, here's an example of acrylic gouache on aluminum. Mm hmm. But just to make sure it was going to really stick, I used GAC. 100. Ah, GAC 100, a great surface primer and extender for paints. Exactly. So then I know it's going to stay on there. Then, more varnish on top of that, mm -hmm. and we're good. Now, if you really want to go crazy, which I like to do is go crazy, this is a um, triad. You get three colors. And the you know, extend them out, mix them together. Mm -hmm. This was done on paper. And then I took that paper and glued it with the neutral pH adhesive. Uh huh. Get that from Prestons. Then glued that on, sprayed it with cam bar. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, put on an isolation coat. Isolate. Clear glossy barrier applied to on top of acrylics before varnish. Mm -hmm. And then after that, where did my varnish go? Yeah. Uh, which which one do you want? The gloss polymer? You be, but anyway, what do I do with it? Yeah. That one has a UV protector. Oh here it is. Thank you. Here it is right here, the gloss polymer varnish with UV protected. So this can be, so this is, gets put on after the isolation coat. So this could be 
after 200 years and somebody wants to uh, clean it to take off the old varnish, still protected by the isolation coat, and put on another layer of, of varnish on top. So, here is a butterfly. And this is all 100%. Can you speak a little bit louder? Yes, that's 100% um, gambar. And no, wait a minute. 100% gouache, acrylic gouache on here. Here is an example of putting the varnish on. This one's not been varnished. Varnished, not varnished. This maintains the flatness, that satin surface. Very velvety, beautiful surface. But if you want to frame this without having to put a glass over it, then you can spray it. This was sprayed with cam bar, isolation coat. in his hand. Polymer varnish. And it does change the character of it. This, I've, I showed it to a couple of people and said, what, what is this? And they don't know if it's an oil or an acrylic or something like that. No one ever guesses that it's a um, gouache, for mm -hmm. sure. But it makes a nice application, and this is on aqua board. Oh, lovely. It can be aqua board or clay board. Both work very well with that. I want to and these two I want to talk about another virtue of this product is that they offer up primaries. Here's the primary cyan. They have three primaries, which of course are, you're on a desert island, you get three colors. What do you want? <laughs> you want uh, yellow, red, and blue, because you can't make those. They also then have a primary black and a primary white. So out of those five, you can really mix just about anything. And they mix very well. And I'll show you the difference between mixing uh, three uh, regular primaries with three of these acrylic gouache primaries. The big place you can see the difference is in the violet, the purple. Because if you just have three, you don't have a tube of purple. So you mix the red and the blue and you get violet purple. But look at that in comparison to this other one over here, how much grayer it is. This has a lot of life. Yep really has a lot. So you can see there's more intensity in the orange, more intensity in the green. It just mixes better. Mm -hmm. So you can actually go out plein air painting with just those five tubes of paint. Wow. Very handy. Well, we're starting to run, run out of our time, but I wanted to review a, f a few of the reasons why this paint I recommend so much, the acrylic gouache. First of all, they put the paint in the right order on the chart. There's a red, orange, yellow, you know, Roy G. Bibb. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. And they put them in, a, and they put them in the box that way. I hate that when they mix them up. Okay, here's the, the virtues of it. It's opaque and can be watered down to make more transparent. Beautiful flat velvety surface that photographs so well. 107 colors. Wow. 107 to select from. Uh, one can get a basic kit. Um, here's our basic kit, which comes with, well, this one's been replaced, but with a big tube of white because you'll use plenty of white. Mm -hmm. And then you can just go back and pick and choose the ones you want. You can also get the five. That works really well. Now, just to try, if you're not 
wanting to sell the things you're not worried too much. Uh, here's a traditional little set. And I think it's about $10 to get an entry something just to play. Mm -hmm. But I recommend fewer tubes, better quality is the best, to me, the best way to go. But if you're really just getting started, that's a nice entry level before you go to that. Uh, other virtue, permanent. Here's a big thing. No color shift. When using traditional wash, when you paint it, light colors dry darker. Dark colors dry lighter. It can drive you kind of crazy because particularly if you want to go back and kind of figure that out. So that's a huge thing. Uh, the, the brush strokes flatten out, make that beautiful, beautiful surface. Uh, there's another thing that I really like about uh, Holbein, and Holbein, by the way, does not make entry-level, student-grade, whatever, paints. They only do professional level, so you know the quality is really good. There's no fillers in the paint. They all have the same consistency, and they're beautiful to work with. out too big a large of a mouth and I like to use paper plates. Get the ones that are a little better with a slick surface on here. And that's about all you want to put out at once. And then just add more later because it does dry depending on how fast. Now if you're working on something large and you've got the big brush at it, fine. But if you're working uh, smaller with your um, with the 80th anniversary brush you see your anniversary brush <laughs> we can we can use these we can even do like little grid things can mix these things and use it with a pen. Aha! Uh -huh. Possible to be used with a dip pen. Yes. Just add a little bit more water to it, mix it up, put it on your pen, and there you go. Beautiful. Yeah. Talking about Agnes Martin, I did a fake one. <laughs> And it's fun. You can even do these little things. And these could also go on to a um, note card or something. So your little practice things mm -hmm. can turn into something fun. And um, many times I use this as talon colored paper. When I'm testing things, I use what's called a scholar's page, which uh, is the closest thing I'll ever be to a scholar. Is And then you can be testing your paint before you put it on there and then if you can kind of make art with this and then before you know it you can have yourself a really nice bookmark and it's not going to come off on your book or get moist or get wet very nice all right well thank you so much for um, having me down here and i just love playing with this wash Oh, Lloyd, thank you. It was a real pleasure to see everything that you've been working on and and uh, and to, to learn so much about a new material. Yes, well, well jump in. Uh, you will not be sorry. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> thank you, Lloyd. And thank you, everybody who's been watching at home or wherever it is that you might be. Um, Holbein Acrylic Wash, we just brought it into the store, and we'd love to have you come on by, take a look at it, and tell us what you think. Um, if you have any questions, please give us a call, 502-454-9954. Thank you so much, and we hope to see you at the next uh, Facebook Live demo.